welcome to Reanimator Reviews. I'm Rayanne, and I just watched Monster in the Closet, which I found streaming on Amazon Prime. Oh my goodness. So the movie opens with not actually showing the monster, just showing people screaming, clothing flying out of the closet, and people getting dragged in, presumably killed by a really weird sounding monster. Richard is a reporter that they send out to kind of get rid of him and he bumps into the professor who is played by a very young Paul Walker whose mother named Diane is a professor at a university. They then meet Dr. Pennyworth and they're trying to sort of figure out what's going on, what kind of creature could be doing all these things as they have one of the monster's claws. Monster keeps striking. Um, we find out that the monster can leave the closets and can come out into the streets. We see it in its full glory. We see its tiny, stupid little head pop out of its mouth as well. It's literally just a gaping maw all the time, making all these weird sounds, kind of like this, with little chicken legs walking around. They realize they have to evacuate the city. They must get everyone out. No one is safe. Everyone has closets. <sighs> I'm going to leave it off there. There's a weird love triangle thing. Not really a triangle because Diane's not interested in the other reporter, only Richard. So, <laughs> Dr. Pennyworth figures out from listening to sounds that uh, the professor... This is confusing with all the professors. The child professor, the tiny Paul Walker child, has recorded, and he feels like he can communicate with the monster. So they are wandering around the evacuated part of the town, which they're really not supposed to be in, and he has a xylophone with him, and he's playing this one tune over and over again, which will get stuck in your head. There is uh, a very long, drawn-out part of this where it's... Oh, yes, I'm sorry I'm boring you cat is yawning where they're just trying to figure out where the monster is because they hear bumps but nay it's the military and they're pissed that they're in a quarantine zone however the doctor professor whatever the hell his name was is convinced he can communicate with the monster he wants to at least establish communication prove that they mean no harm to him one of my likes is there's a very long scene of the monster shuffling and popping its shitty little head out while the doctor is playing the tune and they just keep getting closer and it's like ding 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 and it's like blah for what feels like forever and um I couldn't stop laughing because it's just so stupid I, I won't say what the end of that scene does but it, it's really funny I, I liked that everything with the creature at least was a practical effect. Its eyes moved and blinked, which was cool. Um, the creature design, not great, but I don't think it's supposed to be. It's very campy. The whole movie's really campy. I just, there's really oddly specific, kind of non-specific timestamps at some points where it's like September 24th or maybe 25th. 11.23 p.m. ish. I thought that was a funny touch. Um, there, there's scenes where Richard takes his glasses off or gets his glasses knocked off and he's just standing there glasses list and Diane's just like like he, really? But that also is a big part of the plot we find out later. He's just so beautiful, people are transfixed and pour iced tea everywhere. As we find out, as she's pouring iced tea everywhere, staring at his face. What did I dislike about this movie? Um, I understand it was the time, you know, a lot of things flew in, this is probably late 80s, mid 80s. I don't think it's in the 90s. A lot of things flew then that would not fly now. There's a seen in the opening with uh, John Carradine playing a very stereotypical visually impaired person and as someone that is visually impaired I was kind of like come on that's fuck you 
but a lot of people weren't sensitive to disabilities back then and I also understand it was meant for you know the humor in it also the dead guide dog like don't don't kill animals come on people whatever in movies but like come on um there was a jump scare with a really shitty sounding cat like literally a cat jumps down and someone went meow off camera which that that's actually not a dislike but like I hate jump scares don't do that shit uh I guess I would rate this maybe like a 2.5 out of 5 some of it was a little like the pacing was a little off for me so it was a bit monotonous to watch at times but there were really really funny parts in it and it was meant to be funny so there you go as I said, I watched this streaming on Amazon Prime Video. I'm sure it is available in other streaming platforms, perhaps in physical copy as well. Have you seen this movie? What did you think? It's just that stupid little head popping out of its mouth is going to haunt me. Just, I don't know. Um, leave me a comment down below. Like the video if you did like the video, or you could like the video if you like cats cleaning their little pants. Um, hit the notification bell for all redundant notifications of further uploads and live streams. You can also find me on Facebook at Reanimator Reviews, Twitter and Instagram at Reanimator. Uh, my solo as well as reviews with the groom are available in podcast form on iTunes. Thank you to the Farsighted Network. Please don't forget to check out all of their awesome creators as well. And I think that about wraps it up, and I'm glad we don't have real closets in my house. See you later.